Hello writers and welcome to a rainy and cold afternoon in Yorkshire in England. I'm at my desk at home upstairs in the top of the house. You can see the eaves, you can see the line of the beam across the eaves of the house. This is a small space but it's a space that I absolutely love. I'm using what is basically my, if I can just show you, this was my grandfather's bureau. So right now it's doing very well to be more than 70 years old. It was my mother's desk when she was a schoolgirl. It became my desk when I was a schoolboy. And sometimes we have to look after the things that are really special to us. I've got a few things here which I'm just going to talk you through. And the idea for this video came from, well, there were two reasons. One was I'm doing a lot of videos this month about my book Climbing Out of Debt because the start of a new year is often a time that we focus and whether it's debt or budgeting or declutter I have put my books on a January special price so that people can enjoy those but the videos that I've been creating are all about the basics of approaching your debt and finding a way forward through the distress and the hassle and the anguish that it can cause to carry debt but actually daily action and small steady payments will clear that over a very fixed specific period of time according to your circumstances. That's one reason I figured let's have a break from videos and regular videos talking about climbing out of debt. The other is because declutter is a special thing and when my mother moved out of our family home a few years ago to go into a nursing home I was the fortunate recipient of plenty of things some of which are on display here but other things that are important and special like my father's um, ship's writing desk which is a beautiful mahogany item that folds over and has a leather inlaid writing surface and an ink pot and little secret drawers. But this, being able to share my grandfather's desk with you is very special. The other reason that I wanted to share this, apart from the I need a break from recording videos about my climbing out of debt book and the processes that I hope will help people. And the second reason was because one of my most popular videos is actually simply called what's in my writing bag so I thought maybe if I did a video about what's in my writing space or what's on my writing desk that this might be intriguing or interesting I know that I as a writer I'm always fascinated to see other people's desks or worktops or kitchen tables when they've got their paraphernalia of writing set out and I find that stuff really interesting and in a nerdy sort of geeky writing way it attracts me and I want to know more so this is my writing desk like I've said it was my grandfather's writing desk and it's an absolute beauty grandpa used to have a furniture business in Nottinghamshire in Baseford and Southall or Southwell if you want and Sherwood and places around town and this has survived all of that um, I wrote at it as a child and as a schoolboy. I did my A-levels, as they were then called, in 1981 at this desk. Now we're in 2023 and it will continue to serve me as a space where I can pick up pen and paper and edit something. At the moment I'm working on a small novel about 60,000 words and it deals with an English soldier who was attending a wedding in Belize when he then chooses to stay for a few days before going back to active service but the couple whose wedding he attends go on their honeymoon they fly from Belize to southern Mexico for a beautiful time together but they go missing so our protagonist crosses the border, goes into Mexico and goes on the search to find them and discovers some dark secrets that he then has to fight and get involved with. 
why is that re why is that relevant today because on my desk i have a couple of things that are very special to me this one was given to me by a village elder in 1984 it weighs about a kilo it's a very small item it's probably six inches high four inches wide where the double heads are but it's very heavy it's a mayan double-headed god to protect the crops it's about 1100 years old maybe slightly more um, but it's very special i have carried this for years since 1984 i was given it about 150 miles from the end of my walk between palenque and isla holbosch so about 80 days into my 100 day walk across mexico and i've always treasured this um, it was not only was it an, an amazing gift from somebody to a young englishman walking across mexico but it is symbolically very special with the two-headed god protecting the community and the crops that they raised so this sits on my desk with some other things on the mexican theme i've got a couple of books on my desk one of them is called american dirt it's by janine cummings i haven't read it yet it turned up in the post from my friend katie thank you katie we did our degree together in latin america we each spent a year or so living in mexico in different places um, and i want to read this she's, she's given it to me as a gift and i want to read this i haven't started it yet i'm saving it for a train journey that i have later this week when i take the train um, from bradford over to scarborough but that gives me a couple of hours of reading each way so that will be useful the other book i've got which i've started to dip into is called dead men do tell tales by william r maples the strange and fascinating cases of a forensic anthropologist given the work that i'm starting on at the moment with novels about crime fiction in nottinghamshire and adventure thrillers based in latin america that book's going to come really useful for making sure that i get my facts correct about some of the things that happen to the victims in my stories also on my desk is a beautiful clock this one is from new haven connecticut it was made by a company called jerome and co and i'm just reading from the details inside and it's called a small sharp gothic one day timepiece my father used to collect antique and vintage clocks and i and my brother have shared some of those out between us so we have those in our homes and i love them it's a nice reminder of dad the fact that time is always there is something i've referred to in a couple of other videos about time to write or writing time you'll often find in my earlier thumbnails and often in little b-roll shots where i'm working in a coffee shop or at home you'll find a clock or some watches this is a, a new casio that i bought to replace one that i had stolen which i'm very sad about so i've got two watches here i've got a breitling and a casio completely at different ends of the spectrum in terms of um, standards but both high quality watches with very different price points this one was a beautiful gift it's a breitling from my friend john who turned up at my house completely unannounced one sunday i'd had a very bad year with lots of tragedy and very distressing situations and as a pick-me-up he turned up at my house with this as a gift I've had this now almost 14 years but it came as a gift from a super friend and so when i don't wear it i shake it because it's a standard automatic watch and it sits on my desk with any other of my watches because i i am a, a watch fan and i i love watches and i love pens and that's a journey around around my desk what else have i got on my desk uh, i've got my passport for a flight that i had recently and i'll be using it again fairly soon next to the passport i've got a selection of notebooks and moleskins so standard one from ikea simple range uh, another moleskin a place that we love and is very close to where we live is called salts mill this is a beautiful little pocket notebook designed really for people who are going to sketch and draw with some fabulous thick high quality white paper 
um, but I, I use it for my note taking. Another moleskin and and another one. This is a moleskin, one of my favourites. Fits in a jacket pocket very comfortably. It's too big really for a shirt pocket, but it works in a jacket pocket. The story that I'm working on at the moment, it had its initial idea or the kernel of the idea probably four years ago when I was flying back from Spain. We were walking on the Camino de Santiago, which is a footpath that goes across Spain. This little bookmark is beautiful. It's a medieval bridge in Besalú in northern Spain and serves as a reminder of some very happy times. The story developed in a book like this, a little moleskin that I had in my shirt pocket. We had a few hours on the flight and the idea of this story between Belize and Mexico just came to me and for two hours I wrote the notes down and I did absolutely nothing with it because I was working on some non-fiction stories like the Climbing Out of Debt book, Declutter Your Home, 10 Minute Budget and Simple Self-Help. Those have all come out in the last three or four years. And now I just feel like I'm ready to write some fiction and I'm really enjoying the process. This will be probably a 60,000 word novel when it's finished. I probably need to add somewhere between six and 8,000 words to finish the story and to give some depth to the way that it ends, but that will then leave me with an opportunity for another adventure for my hero or my protagonist in the story. And I'm quite excited about that. I'm genuinely really thrilled by the process and also by the progress that I've been making as I go through that particular um, manuscript. What else have I got on my desk? I've always got a couple of pen pots. This one I bought when I was at uni in Portsmouth uh, almost 40 years ago. And it's just a standard nice piece of pine drilled out standard piece of pine drilled out so that I can pop pens in there. Some of these pens I've had for years. That Schaefer is probably a five pound pen that I bought 30 years ago. I use it regularly. It has a broad nib um, and it writes beautifully. I use that often for cards or letters, but I, again, when I'm working on a manuscript, I like to use a black pen to edit the mistakes I've made and to come out with new ideas. In terms of pens that I write with regularly, these are the these are 0.3 millimeter pens from Mitsubishi Pen Company, and I get these from Salt's Mill in Salt Air, the place I've spoken about before, and which I really enjoy. It's got fabulous coffee shop and restaurant and antique centre, but it has the most beautiful stationery store, and you cannot go in there and not buy a postcard or a notebook or half a dozen pens just to support your activity as a writer. The other thing I really enjoy using are these. I buy a box of these every year. I get them from Amazon. They're called a Staedtler Stick 430 and they're very beautiful and easy to write with, very functional pens, but they have the most superb 0.25 millimeter end to the writing point and I find those superb so I will always get those online and enjoy them. I was going to go to the library today possibly taking out a book but really just to take my notes with me and to get to the end of this book. I think I'm probably five days away. If I can finish it by Sunday afternoon I'll be very happy. But I think that's realistic because of the progress I've made in the last three weeks. So that's my writing desk. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been my pleasure just to share aspects of the desk. There's lots of stuff here that I haven't even talked about or touched upon. In fact, here's one just before we wrap up. I don't know whether you like me, but this is typical of lots of us as writers. A little box full of cartridges, inks, uh, pencil erasers, more cartridges. I've got cartridges here for Waterman, Schaefer, Parker, Lamy, and of course lots of the small standard cartridges that will fit generic pens, of which I'm sure you and I have got lots, because we love pens, don't we? We love writing. It's now 
almost three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm going to write for an hour to see where that takes me on the next stages of these chapters that need finishing. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of my desk. You don't need a big space as a writer. This is all I need. It's probably not a metre and a half wide and certainly less than a metre deep. And when I'm finished and when I'm done for the day, literally all I will do is pick up some of the items and fold up the bureau and shut it for the day. But it's been my desk for a long time. I absolutely love it and I'm very happy to share it with you here today. Wherever you are in the world, happy writing.